So this lesson is referencing actors in blueprints. We're going to be making progress with the gameplay for Marble Run. And the idea for this game is that we have a maze and a ball and the objective is to make the ball escape the maze by tilting it in different directions. So in our journey to make this happen, we'll be taking a look at how to reference actors in blueprints from our level and how we can affect those actors at runtime with player input action events. So in the previous lesson, we took a look at this event begin play node, and we also have this event tick here, but we're not gonna do anything with the tick right now. We're gonna select it, and we're just gonna hit the delete key on our keyboard to remove it from our blueprint. We're gonna take a look at how we can call different events in blueprints. We can call events that react to player inputs, such as when we press a key on our keyboard. These are known as input action events. So how do we find these events? Well, we don't need to drag off from any nodes like we were doing before. We can right click anywhere in the blueprint on the graph and it will bring up the menu and it shows us all actions for this blueprint. If we scroll down, we can come to the inputs category. When we double click here, it's going to show us more categories for input events. And look, we have keyboard events. When we double click here, it shows us a complete list of all the keys on a keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and just call the W key. And look, it's added this input action event for W to our blueprint. And we have two outputs. We have pressed and release. So when we press W, pretty simple, this node will fire here. When we release W, this one will fire. But what happens currently in the game when we press W? Well, we move forwards as the default pawn. I'm just going to print a simple string when we move forwards. And we can just print the message move forwards. Let's take a look at what happens now when we do this. But before I do that, actually, I'm going to break the link on the begin play so we don't have a bunch of print string messages. We just want to focus on this move forwards. So I'm going to close out the level blueprint and hit play. I'm going to focus the viewport by left clicking in it. And when I press W, we get our print string message and it comes up every time we press W. But when I hold W, we're not actually moving forwards with the default pawn. Look, it stopped our movement. We can still move left and right and backwards, but we don't have our movement with the W key. So let's take a look at why this is happening. Let's come back to the level blueprint. And we want to bring back the details panel. We can come up to window and then details. And we can select this W node and look in the top right on the details panel, it's showing us that we consume this input and it says prevents actors with lower priority from handling this input. So obviously when we press W, we are moving forwards with the default pawn, but this W input action event is consuming the input, which stops the input from going to the default pawn. If we uncheck this, we can close the blueprint and hit play and look, we can move forwards and we can still get our print string message. Okay, I just wanted to show you why that was happening. But I'm actually going to come back to the level blueprint and we want to make sure we do consume this W key input because we're going to use this to affect our floor actor. Let's come back to the editor. And as we can see, we have this floor in our level. Let's take a look at how we can use blueprints to affect the floors transform. So let's select the floor actor and in the details panel, let's look at the transform section. We have the location, rotation and scale here, but we also have this mobility section. We can see that the floor is currently marked as static. So because of this, it's going to prevent us from editing the actors transform dynamically during runtime or during gameplay. So we need to mark it as movable to allow this functionality. Okay, so now that we've done this, let's come back to the level blueprint. And because we have our floor actor selected in the level, look what happens when we right click in the graph now. Look, we can create a reference to the floor. Okay, this adds this node named floor here, and it shows us a blue pin. In Unreal or in Blueprints, when you hover your mouse over these pins, it will tell us the type of data that we are dealing with. So we are dealing with a static mesh actor object reference. So it's a bit of a mouthful, but basically we're dealing with a static mesh actor. In this case, it's our floor. So what happens when we drag out this pin? Well, when we drag out and release, we can call actions, actions that make sense in context of a static mesh actor. We want to take a look at doing some rotation with this actor. So in our game, we're going to have a maze and a ball, and we want to affect the balance of the maze so we can try and make the ball 
escape. So how can we get started with that? Well, we want to start affecting the floor's transform when we send some input to the game. And remember, we took a look at what a transform is. It contains the actor's location, rotation, and scale. If we come down to the utility section, look, we have this transformation section here. If we double click on this, it's going to show us a bunch of functions that deal with transform. Okay, we're going to look for the add actor world rotation function. So this function is going to allow us to rotate our floor piece. And look, we have these delta rotation values here. We have roll and we have pitch and we have your. So nothing's going to happen by default because these are at zero, but we can change these values to change the rotation of our actor. But in order for us to make that happen, we're going to connect this function to some input action events. We're going to make it so when we press D, we're going to roll the floor piece right. And when we press A, we're going to roll the floor piece left. Let's break the print string on this W key here. And we can just delete the print string. With this W key, we can duplicate it by selecting it and hitting Control and W. And this gives us two W keys, which isn't really helpful. But look, on the details panel, we can change the input key. So we can come to keyboard and we can change it to the D key. Let's connect the pressed output to the add actor world rotation. And with our floor reference, there's not actually a limit on how many functions we can call from this single pin. So let's call another add actor world rotation function. And then let's duplicate the D key. And with this D key, let's go ahead and change it to the A key. And we just want to make sure we connect the pressed output to this function. So look, we now have the ability to rotate the floor actor with the D key and also with the A key. So when we press the D key, let's make it rotate the floor actor by five units on the roll, which is the X here. So we can just type in five. And then with the A key event, let's change it to roll the opposite direction by changing the X value here to negative five. So now we've set up the functionality. So when we press D, we will roll the floor actor right. And when we press A, we will roll the floor actor left. OK, so let's come back to the editor by closing the level blueprint. Before we hit play, let's select the player start and let's move it so we have a better view of the floor actor. And we can even rotate the player start, which will affect the orientation of the default pawn when we hit play. So let's go ahead and hit play now. And now we can rotate the floor with the A key and also with the D key. Awesome. So we've done all of this by coding inside of Blueprints. So let's break this down. We have an event. In our case, we have the D key. When we press the D key, we execute our code. So we can consider that the event causes when and how our code executes. We then have a function. We have just used the add actor world rotation function, and we can consider this what happens when our code executes. Then we have the actor reference. We have our floor actor reference, and we use this reference to decide who is being affected by our rotation function. So I now have a challenge for you. We've taken a look at how to roll the floor actor and using what we've learnt, I want you to make it so when we press W, we will pitch the floor actor forwards. And then when we press S, we will pitch the floor actor backwards. Support the video here, give it a go. And in a second, I will walk you through the process. Okay, so to do this, I'm gonna take my W input action event and I'm going to move it to the right of these other two. We're going to create a kind of square with these functions and events here. So with the W, we want to add rotation to the floor. So we want to make sure we select the floor in the level. And then we can right click and create a reference to the floor. We can have multiple references in the blueprint if we want to reuse it somewhere else. And we can drag out from here and we want to affect the floor's transform. Specifically, we're going to rotate it so we can come down to utilities, transformation, and then add actor world rotation. OK, we're going to hook it up to when we press W, we are going to increase the pitch by five units. And then we can set up the S key so we can right click and come down to input and then keyboard events. And then we can find S just down here. And then with the S key here, we can use the same reference and call the add actor world rotation and hook this up to the pressed event. And we want to use negative five now. 
we can close the blueprint and hit play. So we can roll it left and right and we can pitch it forwards or backwards with W and then pitch it forwards with S. So we can invert those values just by flipping them inside the blueprint here. So we can change this to negative five and then this to five. And now when we come back to the editor and hit play, we can roll as expected and we can also pitch the floor actor as expected. Okay, so in the next lesson, we're gonna be having some fun by adding a physics ball to our level and seeing how that reacts to our floor. So when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson.